Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about room Q value. Q is a measure of quality. Let's define that as a measure of quality. It's usually, you know, used a lot in EQs and, and things like that. Speakers have Q values. It's the quality of a particular area that you want to look at. So we're going to look at pressure in our rooms because that's the biggest elephant all the time in the room, is how can the room manage low frequency? Because everything in the middle and high frequency range builds upon the low end. If you don't get the low end right first, you're never gonna really have a balanced middle and high frequency presentation. So you wanna make sure that the Q value, the quality of the low end pressure is addressed first and foremost. What do we use to address that issue? Room dimensions, usage, treatment, noise floor. People forget about noise floor. The quieter your room, automatically the higher the resolution. So the goal should be to have as quiet of a room as we can get. Now, barrier technology and making rooms very quiet, very expensive to do. So you have to decide, you know, what is the noise floor that you're trying to achieve what is the usage of the room, and then find a nice compromise between the usage of the room and the noise floor. And of course, budget is always a consideration. So when we design our rooms, we, we look at the low frequency pressure issues first, and we try to design the room based on budget, space requirements, usage, and all those issues. We try to design the room so that it works within a particular range, a pressure range. So when we look at two channel rooms, we look at that 80 to 90 dB SPL. That's what we look at for two channel rooms. We, we don't usually design for anything higher than 90 for two channel. And even that's kind of a push. I don't know why people like it that high, but I think they want more quality and they're not going to get it with more pressure. More pressure does not equal higher quality and resolution. It's just the opposite, okay? Home theater, a little bit different. Got a little higher pressure level in home theater, so we design up to 95 for home theaters. It's all about the treatment, the type amount, and the position of it. For low frequency management, we have to address all four walls and the floor and ceiling. The floor to ceiling dimension is the smallest of the three, so it cre creates a lot of problems. People don't talk about that too much, but that floor to ceiling dimension is very, very critical. That's why we have our platforms. That's why we have our CAW system. So for new builds, you can actually build it into the ceiling. For retrofits, existing rooms, you know, we have our platforms. You can put your workstation on it, put your listening position. One of the best places to place low frequency management is as close to the source of the low frequency energy, let's say a subwoofer, or close to the listening position where you're going to be listening. And obviously you want to listen in an area of lower pressure, right? You don't want to listen in an area of higher pressure. So you have to be sympathetic to the usage and the resolution goals. What are we going to do? What kind of resolution are we going to be happy with? That's the, the bottom line. Two channel, to me, you can push and, and really get high uh, percentages of resolution with two channel because we're only dealing with two sources of energy. Uh, theater is a way different animal. Multiple choices, full range energy, and managing more energy is obviously more difficult and more expensive. So. Low frequency pressure management, first thing we have to pay attention to is reducing the modes. Modes attenuate and exaggerate certain frequency ranges. So we want to get those managed correctly and under control. And you're not going to position your way out of room modes. I can't believe some of the things I read and some of the things people tell me when they call for our room forms. You know, they're going to move their speaker here. They're going to move their listening position here because somebody said this will work and that will work. You cannot play dodgeball with room modes. 
you've got to address them. There's no easy fix other than proper room size and volume and treatment. You're not, there's no easy way out of this situation. You're in a confined box. You can only move certain ways, right? And you have to stay certain distances from, you know, with a two-channel rig, the distances between the speaker and the listing position have to be pretty close as a start point. So you're confined with that equilateral triangle placement. And that's the whole triad of points that you have to position is, is difficult to position it in a way to avoid room modes, especially when they're oscillating through the room every two, three, four feet. It's almost impossible to do that. So a lot of this stuff that people talk about is, is pretty much ridiculous if you understand the physics behind it. All right, what do we got? Reverb times must be equal throughout the room. See a lot of this uh, issue going on. Everything in a room has to be balanced. Think about the two-channel ch system. Think about the left and the right speaker. Think about the signal that goes through the left and the right speaker. Everything in that whole process is about balance. So if everything in the process is about balance, and then the energy leaves that process through the speakers, don't you want it to be sympathetic and also have balance with the room? That's the goal. We want to bring the room more in line, the balance of the room more in line with the balance of the electronics and what it has to go through to produce our two channel systems. All right, decay rates must be linear. You can't, you know, you, you got to have this or you got to have this. You can't have this and you can't have that. You got to have a nice, predictable, and consist consistent decay rate. Our carbon technology is really good for that because it's very powerful and it'll give you that kind of consistency. You can go to our website and look at the performance of our ACDA-12s, look at the performance of our foam even for middle and highs. Everything we design has that smooth response curve to it. And that has to be a prerequisite when you're working with balanced signals all the time. I mean, it just makes common sense, doesn't it? If you think about it, you don't want to take a signal that engineers have gone through painstakingly numerous steps to create a balanced and then throw that energy into a room that's got unequal reverb times, unequal decay rates. What do we got next? Pressure treatment usage, pressure reflections. You got to consider all of these variables. It's very important. So if you adapt the same meticulous attention to detail, so to speak, that the engineers go through with the speakers and the amplifiers. If you adopt that to your room, you, you'll be way better off. It's amazing to me when people call me and they tout the merits of their gear. And then you look at the room, they want to put that gear in after they've just spent five minutes telling me how wonderful it is, it's a huge disconnect to me. They're telling me how wonderful the design is and how wonderful the speaker is and how much years and years of research went into the development of the equipment and how proud they are of you know their purchase and the gear. And then they take it and they put it into a room that's absolutely horrible. It's a huge disconnect. I always think when I hear it of, of the unequal sign in mathematics. You know, we have equal and then we have unequal. So they're talking about the balance. And then when I see their room, I see that sign. And you can't have that. You have to have balance all the way across the board. Resolution is highest when you design for pressure ranges because you know how much energy is going to be placed in the room so you know how much treatment to have 
And we have all that data because we've built so many rooms, I think over 300. So we have all that data. So we know if you've got a room of a certain size, we know what your issues are. We know what it's going to take to fix it. And we know what percentage of resolution we can get. And when we achieve that percentage of resolution, you want to stay within that pressure range so that you're always in that resolution range. Pressure range, resolution range. That's how it all works. Q value, the choice of how much quality you want, how much resolution you want, is going to be based on cost and space availability to treat. Low frequency management in any room can take up to 12 to 16 inches of space. Now you put that on a wall in your room, you give up 12 inches here and 12 inches here, that's two feet. So your 11 foot width now is nine. So you have to allow for that. Here's what you also have to allow for. You have to realize that this new dimension created doesn't produce more problems than the original 11. Because basically you're creating a new room with new dimensions with the treatment. So it's okay to make the room smaller if you're making it smaller because the treatment takes up space. So that's what you have to balance out. And we have, we actually have those two databases that I run side by side with each other. We call this outside dimension and we call this inside dimension. And both OD and ID have to balance out. Room Q value, it's all about pressure. We can get the pressure managed in the room, then we can enjoy more of our music and push up the resolution. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.